In this video, I will be reviewing the Mio Mini Plus. For those who are new to these types of devices, this is a portable retro gaming handheld that can emulate games as far back as Atari, all the way up to Game Boy Advance and PlayStation 1. I will be going over everything from where you can buy one, how much it is, and how to use it. Then I will show some of the features that come with the community-ridden operating system called Onion OS, while also sharing my thoughts on the device. I don't want this video to get too long, so let's get on with it. First, let's go over the price and where you can purchase the Mio Mini Plus. Your budget and how quickly you want the device shipped will be the determining factors in where you buy it. If you want the lowest price, you will want to check both Mio's official store on AliExpress and KeepRetro.com, as they are normally around $55 to $65 depending on sales. The downside of these stores is that because they are located in China, you will be waiting around two to three weeks for shipping. The third option is buying from Amazon. It will cost a little more, around $75 to $85. If you have Amazon Prime, you will be able to get the device shipped in about one to two days. An added benefit, buying from Amazon, is the simple return process if there is something wrong with the device or if you decide you do not want it after trying it. I will have links in the description for all of these options. Now I will briefly go over what comes with the device and I will show the specs on the screen for anyone that is curious. This was ordered from KeepRetro.com. In the box you get the Mio Mini Plus and an SD card with preloaded games. The instruction booklet, an SD card reader, USB-A to USB-C cable, a screen protector, and wipes to apply the screen protector. I do want to note that the SD card reader is not great and the stock SD card is known to get corrupted easily, so it is recommended to get a name brand SD card and a better SD card reader. I will have some links in the description for those. The battery life for me has been around 4-6 to six hours, depending on the game and the level of the screen brightness setting. The time it took to fully charge from a 0% battery was about 3.5 hours. On the front of the Mio Mini Plus, it has four thumb buttons on the right, D-pad on the left, Start, Select, and a Menu button in the middle. On the left side, it has the Volume Up and Down buttons. On the top, there is the Power button and a light to show when it is on or the charging status. On the bottom, it has the headphone jack, the SD card port, and the USB-C charging port. And on the back is the L1, L2, R1, and R2 triggers. The D-pad feels great, and I have yet to have any issues with it missing inputs. Face buttons, when pressed down, don't become flush with the device, which is preferred for me and have felt very responsive with no noticeable lag. L2 and R2 are very easy to press, but I do find that L1 and R1 can sometimes be a little awkward depending on how you are holding it or how large your hands are. If you find a game that uses L1 and R1 a lot more than L2 and R2, you can remap them to make it more comfortable, and there is also a setting that just swaps them in the settings menu I'll show you later. The screen is a 3.5 inch IPS screen, so it looks crisp and the colors are great. When playing inside, you won't have any issues with the brightness. It can get bright enough. If you are in the shade outside, it should be usable no problem. However, if you are in direct sunlight, you are going to have some issues seeing this screen. It's a 4x3 aspect ratio, which is great for all of the systems that this device can emulate. I would have to say the case quality feels really good for the price. It doesn't feel glossy or slippery. The plastic feels pretty solid. The worst aspect of this device has to be the speaker. At about half volume or higher, the sound gets very staticky and distorted. So I would definitely recommend using headphones if you're wanting a good sound experience. Another option is to upgrade the speaker. There is a fairly cheap replacement 
It's around $5 that you can get on eBay. It's easy to install because it does not require any soldering. It's as simple as popping out the old one and putting in the new one. However, this does require you taking the device apart. I will be making a tutorial in the future, but as of right now, there are some other YouTubers that have made videos showing you how to do this. I love the size and how portable the Mi Mini Plus is. It can easily fit in my pocket, it does not get in the way, and sometimes I even forget I'm carrying it. Depending on how large your hands are, or your age, you may get cramps if you plan on playing this for many hours at a time. The Mio Mini Plus really shines for short gaming sessions, whether you just have a few minutes, wherever you are. If you're planning to play this for long gaming sessions, I would recommend getting one of the many grips that can either be 3D printed or purchased from Etsy.com. I would recommend the grip case if you want something that doubles as a grip and a case. Feel free to check out my Mio Mini accessories video if you want to know more about the case, as I want to make this video focus on the device itself and don't want to get too sidetracked with accessories. I'm going to go over some of the basics of the default operating system for people who don't want to use the Onion OS. To power the device on, you just have to hold the power button for one to two seconds. On the stock SD card, it comes pre-installed with games ready to go. You can get to the different systems by selecting games right here. And then the first time that you launch a system, it will take a moment to load the games list. Once that is done, you can then browse the list for a game you want to play. If you already have one in mind, you can use the search feature by hitting the menu button and entering your search query here. You can also use the menu key to favorite your games after having found them to avoid having to search for them again. On the main menu, you can also use the recent option if you need to get back to something that you were just playing. Hitting the menu button while playing a game will bring up the options to save a state, load a state, go into the emulator options, or to quit the game. If you want to change the brightness, you will have to go to the settings for that. And when you want to power off the device, you will have to not be in a game and hold down the power button for three to four seconds. Some of the things I don't like about the default software, one being that the sleep mode, when you click the power button quickly, isn't really a sleep mode. It just kind of turns off the screen, which will save some power. However, the emulator is still running in the background so it doesn't pause your game, and it doesn't really feel like a sleep mode. Another thing is that in order to power off the device, you have to close out of your game. So you will need to save the state, close the game, and then power the device off. In just a little bit, you'll see how Onion OS greatly improves this process. I don't like how cumbersome it is to have to dig around so many ROMs. The ROMs are not sorted very well, I have found some duplicates, and the quality of ROMs themselves are somewhat questionable, as I have found that some of them won't boot, sometimes they crash, so you may find yourself having to go replace some of the ROMs if you run into any of them that don't work. So I highly recommend moving over to using Onion OS, as it's very simple to install. I will link to my 5-minute tutorial on how to install Onion OS in the description. Again, it's best to use a separate name brand SD card for this. Also, by doing it that way, it preserves the stock SD card so that if you ever want to go back to the default OS, all you have to do is swap the SD cards. Something to note is that if you choose to use Onion OS, you will have to add ROMs and the BIOS files that you need to use to the SD card after the install. I show this step in my Onion OS tutorial. If you are wondering where to get these ROMs and BIOS files, you have a few options. You can either copy all or some of the ROMs and BIOS from the stock SD card that came with the Mio Mini Plus. You can use ROMs from your own personal collection. Or another option is to use a community collection, the most popular being a set called Tiny Best Set Go. I try to avoid linking directly to ROMs, as this is a legal gray area. But Tiny Best Set Go should be very easy to find on your own. Another good resource for finding these ROMs is the r slash ROMs Reddit. So go there and they may be able to help you further. 
Now I will show you Onion OS and the features it adds that turns a decent experience into a great one. The main screen is set up somewhat the same as the stock OS. You select games, you select your system, and you launch your game. Now here is one of the best features. When playing a game, if you just press the menu button quickly, it will launch what is called the game switcher. It will save the state of your current game, and then you can switch to any of your recently played games using the D-pad and hitting the A button. It will start right where you left off by loading the state automatically. This is such a convenient feature, it is hard to live without once you start to use it. From here, you can also hit the B button to go back to the main menu and select another game from systems if you'd like. Another great feature is that when you need to power down the device, all you have to do is hold the power button for a few seconds. It will automatically save your state, and when you turn the device back on, it will load that state automatically, bringing you right back to where you left off. And this is one of my favorite features, as it makes it so easy to play somewhere, and as soon as you need to go, you just power it off, and you don't have to worry about saving. This is what makes it such a great pocket device, as you can have it out, and within seconds be playing, and then when you need to stop, you just turn it off, and you don't have to worry about saving manually. There's also some useful hotkeys. I'll go over quickly some of the major ones. By holding the menu button and hitting the volume button up or down, you can increase and decrease the screen brightness without having to go to the settings. You can also hit the menu and select button to toggle the retro arch settings screen. I will not be going through all of these settings as it's a very extensive list and I'll probably have to make another video for that. Because it automatically loads your save states, you may want to know this option is here to reset the game, and that way if you ever need to get back to the title screen to start fresh, you can. Hitting the R1 button while holding down menu will toggle fast forward, which is great for games like Pokemon or old RPGs that have a lot of grinding or a lot of walking that you can speed up. Hitting start while holding menu will cycle through different image scaling options. That way you can choose if you want to display pixel perfect, or you can stretch it to the full size of the screen. On the main system screen, if you hit the select button, you can scan for new ROMs in case you have added some to the SD card and they're not showing up. When you're in the game selection screen, you can hit the select button to add a game to favorites or search just like the stock software. Another option is if you highlight a game and hit the Y button, you will be given a menu that lets you reset the game and start it. This can be useful if you want to start a game at the title screen, and that way you don't have to go through the RetroArch reset menu every time. Another option in this menu allows you to change what emulator core runs this specific game only. So if for any reason you run into a game that's not running very well or has lots of lag, you can try one of the other cores for that system and you may get better performance. That's it for the hotkeys that I will be going over. However, I will link to the full list on the Onion OS website if you're curious. Now I'll quickly do kind of an overview for some of the settings in the apps menu. You can explore these in more depth at your own convenience. However, I just want to go over a few that I think are very important. The package manager is where you go to install other emulator systems and apps that you may have missed on the initial install. So you can always go here and browse through and see if there's anything you find interesting. Tweaks has most of the other settings to customize Onion OS to your liking. Within here, System has an option where you can turn on and off if you want the auto resumed game when you power it on. If you turn this off, it will just go to the normal main menu when you power the device on. In button shortcuts, you can change what the menu button does in different situations. Under advanced, there is an option that I spoke about before where you can swap the back triggers. So L1 becomes L2 and the same thing on the right side. Theme switcher allows you to change the theme of the main UI. There are a lot of other themes that you can download from the Onion OS GitHub if none of the normal ones are to your liking. So moving to my final thoughts, I think the Mio Mini Plus is one of, if not the best beginner retro handheld. It's not a big investment to try it out, and there's lots of great features that even some of the more expensive devices don't have. And it has just a great community of people behind it, whether it's people on Reddit answering questions, sharing photos of their devices and mods that they've done, 
people on Etsy making 3D prints, selling stickers or cases, and the great team of people behind making Onion OS constantly improving the software. This device really shines in those situations where you know you're going to have to be waiting for a certain amount of time, but you don't know how long. So you can start a game, get into it, turn it off whenever you need to, and come back to it later. The people who this device is not for, obviously people who are trying to play things more recent than PlayStation 1, whether that's N64, GameCube, PS2, things like that, it will not play. I would also not recommend it for people who want something where they can binge game on it for three hours at a time, unless you're going to be getting something like a grip. Um, there's a lot of other devices that are more comfortable for longer periods of time. I would highly recommend this device for anyone wanting to dip their toes into the retro handheld world. I still reach for mine when I know I'm going somewhere where I might have sporadic times to play, even though I have more powerful devices available to me. I tried to cover a lot in this video, however I may have missed something. If you have any questions, or if you have anything you'd like to add that you think people should know, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.